Today on Typical Books, we're going to talk about my booktube identity. This is a tag video. I don't do tags very often, but I figured I should do them more often because I can also record them while I record other videos because they're typically really quick and a little more chatty. So I really enjoy that. And I've thought quite a bit about booktube identity, what I want to bring to booktube as a booktuber and a book reviewer, a book lover, book collector. And also because of all this talk recently about quitting booktube, a lot of people are talking about quitting booktube, but I don't really have many thoughts on that. And a lot of them are quite negative. So I thought I would explore that a little bit with why I choose to remain on booktube and what I think I bring to it and maybe try and differentiate a little more of like what sort of booktuber I am. Cause a lot of us, especially in horror, don't fit in to the very typical booktube style. So what is my booktube style? We all know what our reading style is. We know what genres we like. And to say I'm a horror booktuber doesn't really, you know, put me in the same envelope as some very large channels or very small channels. So maybe through these tags, which was done by reading this life by the by, I watched that and really enjoyed it. So I thought, you know what? Everyone's tagged. That means I'm tagged. I'll do this tag video. The first question is, what do you want your channel to be known for? And I suppose, on one hand, a place to come for new releases, specifically from Horror Writers Association authors. And that sounds just so broilerplate. I also want my video to be known for the groovy bookworm pillow. <laughs> I mean, to be fun about it. Uh, like Sin's channel, Sin's Book Nook, is known for bookish things and weird stuff. Like that sort of fun thing. I want like a fun community horror tribe, right? But that sounds like a lot of work as well. So to be the place that people come to for new horror book news is also helpful as well. I don't know, just me, I guess. I think that's what I want my channel to be known for, to be really, really boil it down to its most simple thing. I want typical books of terror to be about me talking about typical books of terror, I suppose, just like any other booktuber channel like the bookubus wants to be the person that seduces the books or you with the books i don't know regina's haunted library has a haunted library harpies in the trees is leering down at you with good book wisdom i i don't i don't know like the name of our channel sort of usually embodies what we want to be known for question number two what content will people find on your channel all of that and more you will find all the new releases coming out that catch my eye, usually of a very typical 80s slasher, dark horror and extreme horror style. I don't really go so much for the YA horror, so it's really like died in the wool horror is what I typically go for. New releases coming out. I'm all about looking at that eerie eye candy. I love the covers, some of the top down sort of thing. So when I usually show off books from halls, I'll do a video showing you how the book is constructed, what it looks like, talk about the fonts and the color of the cover. So a little bit of a physical book appreciation. You will also find reviews. I took down a whole bunch of reviews and then put them all back and I continued doing them after stopping for a while because I like doing them and some people seem to enjoy them and they sometimes get views years and years later. So I, I I'm I take that to mean that it's useful. That's what I understand about book reviews, single standalone book reviews. So you can find them at least one a month on this channel. Question number three is what is the most represented genre of books? Definitely horror here on this channel, horror. You can also find dark classics, dark crime books, sometimes true crime books, sometimes nonfiction, all with a horror, horror adjacent or horror related bent to some extent because i love horror it's called typical books of terror I, I couldn't just call it horror books for horror people which i would have liked to do i think that's the tagline of the podcast that i do about horror movies with my co-host wes dead air night uh, dead air podcast on splatterpictures.net i think it's called a horror site for horror people now that i think of it but yeah horror books for horror people question number four is what are you known for championing Horror. I think I can answer all these questions with just the word horror. Uh, yeah, it's definitely horror. And that sounds a lot like reading this life and other people that have done this tag from the horror 
corner of YouTube. Uh, definitely horror. <laughs> you know, that's what we, we say that a lot. That's what we champion and that's what I'm known for. Maybe new releases, maybe Horror Writers Association and debut novelists work. That could be something as well. Question number five is what author is regularly featured on your channel? And uh, a real mix. I don't usually hone in like this is a question that really speaks to me that it is they're, the answer they're looking for is Brandon Sanderson, and you're not going to find the answer here because a lot of booktubers in the big world of booktube, of all the other genres there are in this world, of which I've heard there's more than just horror, they all seem to read Brandon Sanderson, and there's a lot of that. There might even be people that are like all Lee Bardugo all the time or Riley Sager. I'd like to go back through my videos with an AI and see if there is a particular author that I talk about all the time. It's not going to be Stephen King. It's not even going to be Riley Sager. It's not going to be Stephen Graham Jones. Like a lot of people do hang up on an author like that. Grady Hendrix gets a lot of love, Eric LaRocca, but I don't know. I just, I am so uh, interested in all of the books that I don't think one author gets highlighted. So I don't really have an answer for this. All of the authors, horror authors get featured regularly on my channel. Question number six is what can people expect more of in the future? And I'm to reveal some exciting plans. The best plan is no plan. My father said that to me as a child a couple times and it stuck. It stuck deep in the crags of my brain. The best plan is no plan. And that is how I approach life and everything in it, including this channel. I don't have any exciting plans. It's all exciting. The fact that I record is exciting, really, honestly. So yeah, I don't know. What do you expect from, what do you want to expect from this channel? I've, I have some like little ideas. It really depends on how long they cook up here before they come out at least half baked before I really try them on the channel. There's been some ideas, but I don't know. I, I wouldn't really want to talk about them because they're the, they're less than half baked. They're sticky batter. They're, they're sticky batter lost in the back of the fridge, like so much sourdough starter. How's that for alliteration? And now number seven, I am to tag other booktubers and everyone is tagged. And I'm, I'm just stealing that. That's what I always do when I did do tag videos. Maybe that's part of my exciting plans for the future is to do more tag videos because they are more conversational and we get to explore a little bit about what it means to be a book tube host. So yeah, have you done this tag yourself if you're a booktuber? What do you think? I'm missing out here. Is there something that I'm known for that I don't know? I mean, it's a real, glance in the mirror to me because I don't watch my show necessarily. I create it. So when I watch it, I'm looking at something completely different than what you're seeing. So if there's something you think that I am known for, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and have an ooky spooky day.